Okay, welcome back to our uh, second hour. Um, we have two questions that uh, that was put up, uh, uh, and I'll just address those two questions. Uh, one is uh, one of the questions was uh, to explain solving. Um, what what is solving? So uh, solving, like we did mention, is a uh, is a high response. That is, it's it's when you are um, side tracking the conversation of your counselee by moving to any kind of a solution that you're offering them. So either your advice or any kind of a, a problem solving uh, that, that you offer interferes with your counselee's understanding and exploring their own thoughts and their own feelings that often can lead to certain solutions which addresses the situation that they are um, uh, that, that they are in. So using uh, this kind of a response makes them feel that they or makes them come to a place of understanding or gives them the message rather that they may not be able to figure this out on their own. Okay. And these responses are um, especially those responses um, of um, you know giving solutions uh, is appropriate only when uh, the um, counselee has finished struggling with the issue and needs help or when the counselor uh, counselee has finished whatever he or she has wanted so you 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 have to be careful in in when when you are suggesting even making suggestions should not come prematurely so there are instructions and suggestions that happen during counseling sessions but it shouldn't come prematurely it shouldn't come before a time even uh, before they finished really understanding and exploring that for themselves okay so that that is much later only after they have come to a place of exploration of whatever the situation is and whatever they feel about it it's only after that that you that uh, you know those instructional phases or you know coming to a place of suggestions comes only then okay so problem solving doesn't happen at all in the initial phase when before i mean it shouldn't be prematurely done otherwise it's like this you're cutting off the wings of a butterfly when you try and pull them out of their you know their lava stage when you're helping them come out of that pupa you're actually debilitating them so in the same way um, you allow for a complete expression of those thoughts and feelings before you come to a place of that problem solving, those problem solving methods. Okay. The second question that I think it was here is um, uh, how do does positive evaluation, how can how does positive evaluation become a high risk response? Saying you're absolutely right, um, require more clarity. So we were saying that when you evaluate either when you either evaluate positively or negatively you're changing the focus of that communication or that conversation by shifting it from what they think about it to the way that you you are seeing it okay so um uh, as we said you know those positive positive evaluations what what it does is you're making an evaluation for the other person you may be agreeing to something or disagreeing to something uh, that they see and that isn't your role your role is to stand on a neutral ground for them to be able to evaluate it themselves and your role is to see the pros and cons of that evaluation if they feel that like for example let's say they are saying something like um, you know, I had, I have no money. And so I had to steal. All right. So now here you are, you may not agree to this, right? Um, or you may agree to it, whatever. But what you are helping them. So when you agree to it, it almost, it becomes a high risk response because there is a evaluation or a judgment that's been made, maybe on their favor. Okay, it is probably at their favor or probably not in their favor. But you have lost the um, space to help them think about 
that challenge when you either agree or disagree. Because when you do agree, it my counselor agrees with this, that what I did was right. When you agree with it, okay? Or when you disagree with it. The point of you of saying is, um, like let's say he says, you know, uh, I had to steal bread when, uh, I mean, I had to steal because I, I was hungry, okay? He says something like that. So your response is, your response of uh, disagreeing is, you know, how the, I, I don't agree with that philosophy. You may say something like that, all right? That immediately sent, that, that brings about a judging. Let's talk about something that is more agreeable. They may say something like, you know, uh, I am a parent here, I'm in authority, so I, I struck my child uh, with the rod. And uh, that's what it is. So you say, hmm, yeah, I agree. You know, you should do that or something like that. So what you're doing there is you have uh, got off the uh, possibility for the counselee to really judge for themselves of their actions because you have given a sense of a verdict or sense of a of a judging there and uh, that that leaves them to not really think about something because maybe something is agreeable in your eyes okay and agreeable to your your counselee but that's like i said that's not the role you have your role is to help them to evaluate things for themselves so all you need to probably do is um, you know, you feel you you kind of feel right that you hit your son or that you hit your son with the rod. That's just reflecting. That doesn't mean you're agreeing. You're just reflecting on maybe the content, or you're saying, you know, you were so angry that you had to resort to something like that. Now, when I'm making a statement like that, it helps the counselee think, yes, I was extremely angry, and maybe that was a wrong thing to do. So, you know, you've, you've probably got to, when you do agree or when you do disagree, you have not giving them room to actually explore a bit further. And that's why uh, that becomes a high risk response. I hope that's clear, uh, Prabhakar. Okay. Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Yes, I will. I will share share the material. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is um, uh, we're going to do a bit of an exercise. Okay, and I, I'm going to put you all all in breakout rooms, and in each breakout rooms, there are 27 of you. You will. I'm, I'm trying to get three people in each breakout room. Okay, there may be some who may not. Uh, I, I think some of you cannot be put into a breakout room, I think, because of some um, version of the Google Meet that you're using. So if you're staying back in the main room, don't worry. Um, I'm there in the main room and we can we, we can do a, a play as a uh, 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 listening ourselves. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to get into a breakout room with two other people. Now, I want each of you to um, no, I, I think in the first, first we will just do it once. I would like one of you to be a counselee, one of you to be a counsellor, and the other to be an observer. Okay? And what we are just going to focus on is, now, uh, please don't leave the meeting, okay? This is learning. So my my humble request is don't leave the meeting. If, if you inadvertently left, it's okay, but please come back. Uh, all right. So what we're going to do is there's going to be a counselee and there's going to be a counsellor and uh, there is going to be an observer. OK, your focus is only remember, your focus is not to help solve the problem that the counselee is talking to you about. That is not the essence of this exercise. The essence of the exercise is only to uh, to work on these responding skills. Okay? So don't worry that I have not helped the person. I didn't solve their problem. I didn't understand their problem. Don't worry about any of it. Okay? Your, your task is only to come to a place of responding and learning how to respond, especially with feeling and responding with meaning. Okay, so these are the two. And, and of course, you use the other three also. Acknowledging responses is acknowledging 
um, uh, content and the last sum, summative reflecting, which is you reflect at the end. So each uh, one of you, I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do this. Okay. And once you're done, I'd like the observer to take notes. Okay. On how you saw the session going. Okay. So this is only in the midst of three of you. So please, uh, in each group, head right in. And one of you become the counselor, one of you become the counselee and the observer. Talk about something very, uh, you don't, don't make it a very, very big thing. You know, something, uh, something that is that you're personally dealing with is also fine. Okay. The idea is to give responses. And that's what we are learning. Okay. Are we good with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you, Abni. Um, all right. I'm just going to look at how many people are there. Okay. In some groups, you may have four people, but that's okay. You know, just uh, uh, two of you can be observers. All right. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do this. And um, we'll let's see how this goes. Okay. So all the best. And we'll uh, reconnect back in 10 minutes. You may need to accept, join or accept it, okay? So please go ahead and accept that. Uh, there are some of you on this call who need to accept and go to your breakout room. So please do that. I think uh, Prabhakar and Presi have not, I can't assign you all for some reason. So I don't know why I'm not able to do that. Uh, Pastor, I'm just updating it. I think it's not updated on my uh, software. Okay. So I'm just updating. So I'll... They are updating it. Okay. Okay. In some rooms, there are just. Uh, Isaac, Taisha, Salome, could you all go to your rooms, please? Chaya, you can also go to your room. Uh, Susan's not there. Uh, Rose, you were not able to get into the room? Rose? Rose, you've been assigned to fourth room.
uh, do have do we have this breakout room session some of you here on the group okay so i i let work whoever is here so is Prabha both the prabakas are here rose are you here okay isaac are you in the call Taisha, are you in the call? Okay, doesn't look like it. So, um, okay, Prabhakas, both the Prabhakas? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> I'll be the observer. <laughs> One of you can be the counselor and the counselee. Go ahead. Y'all, I'm, I'm just going to mute myself. Um, okay. And I'm going to listen to, y'all are going to take this over, okay? Yes, Pastor. Okay, Prabhupada, what do you want me? Uh, Prabhaka, Prabhaka Rao? Uh, yes, Pastor. Yeah, so so in the main room, there is uh, uh, Prabhaka, the other Prabhaka and you. So, okay. uh, so, we, so you can hang on in this room itself and we'll uh, do it here itself. Okay, I'm so the observer. Is... Is it, this is the main room, Pastor? Yeah, this is the main room. You you couldn't be. You're not. You you are not able to get into these rooms for some reason. Uh, I didn't right. get. Uh, actually, I had updated uh, the uh, app, but I didn't get any. You know, um, in um, invitation or something like. Okay, like, that, that means that there's something else. So so why don't you both of you go ahead and uh, one of you be the counselor, the other be the counselee, and I'll be here. Okay. Okay, and the two others are there, like Rose and Taisha. They're also I don't being... think. No, I don't think they're they're here. They're probably uh, not on the call, or they're okay. not able to speak. So you you guys could go ahead. Okay. Okay, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, go okay. ahead. Okay, Pastor. Yes, Prabhaka, you take a part. You take a role. You want to be a counselor or the counselee. Um, you do the counselor part. I I'll do the counselor part if it is okay, brother. Yeah, yeah, fine. We'll try. <laughs> okay, it's just to try. Oh, <laughs> uh, Pastor is there, so she will lead it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we're in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> we are stuck with Pastor, so we can't escape now. <laughs> okay, so um, like, like, what particular topic we would like to see? Um. I'll, I'll create like a scenario for me. Um, okay. So I have a problem going through, like I am going through a heavy workload. Like, okay. And I couldn't be able to manage <clears throat> my work. So I'm a okay. hard worker, but I have a multitask assigned to me at the same time. Okay. And I feel that I couldn't be able to cope up with every task assigned to me. But I want mm. to... Uh, manage to work and do it all but uh, somehow like um, due to health issues or kind of you know uh, peer pressure I couldn't able to deliver out so that's mm. my problem okay fine fine uh, so Prabhupada it seems like you, you are hard working mm -hmm. and you want to achieve a lot of things yeah uh, and you seem you have too much in your plate. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, can you can you uh, help me understand a little more? Like uh, any particular thing that you feel it's too much? Uh, is it because lots of things in your plate, or you want to focus? Uh, uh, hmm. Or the things that you want to solve first. Do you have any plans? Like, how can you come about? Yeah. Uh, like, um, um, for example, like um, I'm doing a job, uh, and I even have a calling for ministry. So okay. I have to do ministry, and I have zeal to, you know, um, work hard for ministry. But at the same time, I have to take care of the family and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, you know, have particular time schedule assigned mm. to me. I okay. have to work. 
and but i am not satisfied with the outcome like i am not able to give my 100% to minister as well as to the work so i am in dilemma um, okay. i am not able to achieve it so if i lose the job i i might be worried about my finances and if i keep stuck into my work i might be worried about my ministry yeah that's it. yeah okay yeah it's good that uh, you have a desire to work and parallel you also thinking about to balance the, uh, your personal life with the family as well it's good um, so uh, how do you think uh, do you Baba, have I'm a just plan gonna, i'm just going to help you here yes, so he he said something he said that i'm in a dilemma when mm. i you know one is when i'm at work i i'm 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 afraid that ministry would go or when i'm at ministry i'm afraid that my finances won't be enough okay so he is mentioning something here so what do you think he's probably feeling here and he actually said it also part of it. yeah like uh balancing like, like if like the time that he is uh uh he could he wanted to do the ministry as well and also take care of the family okay. what uh, is he feeling what's he feeling what feeling are you getting from that is not able to uh, do the full full thing like uh, i think he's, he's feeling uh, little 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 scared uh, i think finance financially uh, he wanted to be uh, sound so that okay. he can he can do the ministry also and take care of the family the concern is like both um, have a desire mm-hmm. uh, for family and to do the will of god parallelly not to give okay. up on anything right so so that is the desire but there is a definite confusion do you see a confusion kind of like Or maybe management he said a uh-huh. dilemma yeah right? dilemma yeah yes, yes. he brought that up okay so how do you reflect that now what you want to do is you want him to process this dilemma hmm. okay? okay so how would you help him to process that dilemma by responding to what he just said so try again try again to go back to reflecting or responding to the to the yeah. feeling okay okay uh, can i add uh, some point to be further clarified i mean if it is okay pastor yeah you can you can you go ahead yeah uh, see uh, my my view is um i want to be a financially independent uh, because mm. uh, i don't want uh, to take a part for ministry to take up for financial purposes mm. i want to see of god to save like people from say and to, you know uh, uh, be a kingdom builder not for the sake of finances because i want to be financially sound and i want to be will of people so that is my actual dilemma uh, if i uh, you know dedicate myself completely into an estate and if i give it things to the faith then i'll be in more depression i'll be in a more state so i put he has said that uh, i don't uh, i don't uh, worry about my family and i just mm. think whole heartedly at the same time um i you know want to be in a state where uh, my resources financial resources keep coming maybe it uh, in a job or in mm. any business or whatever i don't okay. know yeah yeah can you respond to that prabhaka what uh, prabhaka prabhaka rao said can you respond to that yes 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 master so i uh, so prabhaka i see that you want to uh, do the ministry a genuine heart you have to do the ministry uh, and while doing so you also uh, want to take care of the family and you you are looking into how you can 
manage both in terms of the time or uh, uh, running the family uh, without without you know um, uh, burdening in one area like you don't want to um, anybody pointing out saying you you uh, doing ministry just for the sake of finance or for uh, uh, any uh, outward expression you have a, a desire that you get your applause from god um, so is it uh, you are facing challenges how to manage the time and the finance true brother true okay that's okay. good that's good prabhaka you what you just did is you summed up you did a summative re- reflecting of what mm-hmm. prabhaka was saying that's good so the next part of it would be to uh really what is he feeling through this dilemma uh, maybe you know we didn't have enough time to go there but yeah you you okay. did a did a good job okay great good <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Okay, great. Okay, I think everybody is back. All right. So what I want to do is uh, all the counselees, all who were the counselees, I want you to express or tell me what, what, how did you feel talking to your counsellor, the way that they responded, the way that the skill they use. So be be candid okay be honest and open because this is learning and this is nothing no one is uh, you know out to harm anybody here it's just for learning so all the counselees who were talking about the problem i'd like you to tell me what you felt whether you felt like sharing more or you felt like it was better you know i don't want to talk anymore because they you didn't feel a sense of welcome or a sense that they wanted to listen so all the counselees maybe one by one i think we had five breakout rooms all the counselees uh, yeah if you could just raise your hands so that i know who is who so if you could raise your hand uh, okay there was there's one is anita there's uh, harrison there's chaya and abinash and uh, here we had uh, prabhakar rao okay and salome okay so let's start anita quickly can you can you share as to what you felt through the process uh, i felt uh, like uh, it was uh, all explained in uh, like paraphrased in a very small sentence like <laughs> my problem is mm-hmm. kind of a big and the sentence was little like more smaller like i thought the problem is very small now <laughs> like i am only making it big like so when when seeing, yeah uh huh the way i am seeing okay. so from my point of view it's a very huge problem but when the okay. counselor uh, like paraphrases that to me like it's uh-huh. kind of a very very small <laughs> and i am uh, i am like uh, like unnecessarily i'm making uh, like a uh, issue out of it like that like that i, I felt so did you feel that in a positive sense or in a in a sense that you are in a more negative sense what sense did you see that uh, not negative or i cannot say even positive also because uh, uh, it kind of uh, just exist just a, like a small touch like that. okay so did you feel as if they uh, your counselor understood you yes that they 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 understood what you were feeling they were empathizing with what you were feeling yeah but on a okay. very short time okay oh, very okay very slightly you're saying okay all right okay thank you thank you anita and good job counselor whoever that is okay abinash uh, what thank did you, you what did you feel yes yeah, yes thank you ma'am so actually yeah, uh, i just made a statement and expressed to the counselor uh, that uh, what i ha- actually what really had happened to me and that was real issue to me so as a counselor i expressed to that counselor all of that and as i was telling all of the scenario uh, actually i i felt that uh, i was opening up and i felt that 
I felt that uh, I should talk more with him. So mm-hmm. that's the point mm-hmm. of view from my side. So, so you felt that they, uh, your counselor understood what you were going yeah, through, yeah, what you were yeah, saying. Yeah, was actually, able to pick up the quest, pick up your feeling. It you mm-hmm. you felt that. Yes. Okay, good, yes, good job, good job, <laughs> counselor. Okay, uh, Abhishek, what did what did you experience through with your counselor? I I, I express welcome welcoming uh, because I express uh, my problem to her and she uh, helped me to give solution solution like uh, he advised me like uh, giving me to come out of this situation that I'm facing uh, so okay. I feel uh, and I share more of it with the counselor mm-hmm. like more of the problem Mm-hmm. So I express uh, better. I feel very really good. Okay. The counselor. So, so did the counselor uh, understand what you were going through, or did the counselor give you a solution right away? Yeah, he, she understand. Okay. Okay. So you felt that they they knew what you were feeling and what you were what you were experiencing. Yeah. Okay. All yes. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Abhishek's counselor too. Salome, what did you feel with your counselor? Uh, so at the first, I think she was a little bit confused. Okay. And uh, but then later on, I think she understood, and uh, by the end, she gave me a little solution also, like like a advice that mm-hmm. I'll be fine about it. Okay, so she didn't respond to your feelings. Ah, uh, she did. So that's what in the end, I think she understood. So the first, a little bit confused. She was confused. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So the exercise was not to find the solution. The exercise was only to keep responding on the feeling. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Salome. Thank you, Counselor. Harrison, what was your experience with your counselor? Okay. Um, I, love, I love the balance between him listening to me and also giving me feedback. Yes, you know, I love the fact that um, he paid attention to what I was saying. I was very, very critical about his feedback, and which also helped me to talk more. Mm-hmm. So, and when he now, like, you know, gave me his feedback on what I have shared with him, I felt positive. Mm. And that gave me room to, to also open up to share more so it was just a fantastic time yeah good so that was the key so that you can open up a lot more because you feel welcomed by the counselor okay great job harrison's counselor okay achaya what did you what did you experience uh i felt helpful and uh, Mm. i'm ready uh to see the next session because it was very helpful and positive. Counselor okay. understood and uh-huh. our session was like uh, good, helpful mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. me. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Good. Uh, Prabhaka, I think Prabhaka also. Prabhaka Rao. Yes, yes, Master. Uh, so, um, Brother Prabhakar was the counselor. And uh, he helped me to actually understand. I mean, he understood my problem, and um, he tried to, you know, sum up uh, all the problems which I. It was an elaborated problem actually, but he tried to sum up uh, conclusively, and um, I feel, you know, um, he tried to understand. And uh, so I would like to have more sessions with him, and I mm. hope definitely uh, he'll going to give me, you know, clarified answer and he will give me good counseling um, so okay let me be with that yeah. okay what about all the observers i'd like all the observers to raise their hands the observers sorry the observers okay there's tarun there's isaac there's salome is felix okay so let's let's uh, uh, check with the observers the observers as your candid uh, remarks okay candid uh, this is you know, remember this is not to 
belittle anyone. This is just a learning task. Okay, uh, so Isaac, sorry, Tarun, Tarun, you're first, sorry. Tarun, uh, what, what was your observation? Okay, I was working with uh, Abhinash and uh, yeah, we, we had actually two counselors because uh, the time was extended. The first 10 minutes, one counselor was doing it and then we switched to another person because we oh, were wow. four. Uh, Okay. <laughs> but it, it, it was a very interesting uh, conversation. We found that the, the counselor has done a very good job. Uh, they have done excellent uh, listening, very active and uh, uh, responded in a very re reflective manner. Uh, and they also explored the problem very well. Uh, starting with the uh, loss of a dog, they went into who gave the dog and then uh, where the attachment came up and uh, also comforted the counselee by uh, assuring them that they did a good job loving the dog when it was <laughs> uh, being raised. And uh, in fact, the counselee also has done an excellent job in vividly describing uh, the feelings. Like, uh, I, I feel the dog is missing. I know the place where it is sleeping and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite dramatic and uh, uh, both the counsellors have handled it uh, very well. Wonderful. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. Yes, Isaac, what is your yeah, observation? The, the counselor actually did a good job. And in responding to the counselee and also uh, uh, feeling what the, uh, the counselee was feeling. Uh, but at the end of the day, I saw from my own point of view that uh, the counselee was a little bit confused and does not know who to uh, ask for help. So I mentioned that to, uh, in, the, in the group that this is what I see, and the counselor accepted it that yes, she's sorry, very confused, <laughs> and then doesn't know who to ask for help. But it was a good uh, time uh, doing this section. Yeah, good, good. Good. Yeah. So, so don't worry. I mean, this happens, especially when we do it the first time, we're so conscious about what do we say? We have to say the right thing, uh, you know, but, but it is, uh, it, this, this is a good practice to go on. Yes. Felix, what was your observation? Okay. Um, initially the, the, the narrative by the counselor was not well, um, caught by the counselor because I'm, I was like, um, the counselor was talking about studies um, both online and offline with Bible school and the university. So um, I think um, initially it wasn't well communicated. So, But they both did well. The communication was cordial. And then probing questions and well-sorted um, well responses. Yeah, everyone was participating. So it was, it was a good encounter. OK. And you. well, uh, yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, Felix. That's great. Good. OK. Uh, Sam? Thank you, Pastor. Um, so when when the the initial part was really good, uh, where the counselor was uh, responding, I, I think, by the book, there was a lot of, uh-huh, um, tell me more kind of stuff. And then... Um, and then, and and which encouraged the counselee to open up more. Uh, in between, I thought I heard like an evaluation where the counsellor said like that doesn't seem right or I don't think that's good or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but surprisingly, that worked more in favor of the counsellor. The counsellor, yeah, 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 like that's what exactly I mean. And it started opening and building up more. Mm -hmm. that um, and then uh, but the, the counselee was I think uh, yeah out of the 10 minutes the counselee must have spoken for like nine and a half or, mm -hmm. or even nine minutes and the counsellor total with everything just under a minute except in the last minute where you know we realized that it's about to close I think the counselee oh, so the counsellor might have felt the pressure to okay I have to give something so he was like you did the right thing and so it was going on and then we came back to the <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay okay the pressure of the of time time okay yeah. good good okay and I think my observation in in my group was um, it really helped uh, I, I think the counselor counselor um, uh, quickly got on to the problem. Uh, completely understood what the problem was. Um, I think one one feedback that uh, what what is happening is 
he probably got into a question mode really quickly uh, but wasn't wasn't there to to stay on the feeling level so we kind of reworked that and then you know he was able to express that and uh, the the council actually shared a bit more of information after he was able to do that so good great uh, that's a wonderful wonderful exercise you know i think we should keep doing this because that's the only way that um, we will we will probably evolve these skills and work through some of these skills okay so uh, we have 5 minutes and what i'm going to do for maybe 5 7 minutes is i am the counselee and all of you are my counselors okay and uh, i'm going to I'm share going to something. something and i'd like when i pause somebody has to unmute and and speak okay all right so please uh work fast otherwise you will have your counselee uh, you know maybe just walking out of the room or shutting the room or something like that okay so you have all of you all are together and this is just for us to be able to pick up on 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 these skills a little better okay so it's you're responding to something that i'm going to say okay all right ready are we okay for the challenge you have all each other to hold and to to walk with okay so we're going to we're going to start i don't know how this is going to happen but but let's let's see so don't wait for someone to talk if you get an idea just you know unmute and just say something okay don't wait for okay who's going to maybe somebody else if you have something to say quickly get up and say it okay uh now i want to think of what i want to say something as simple as as uh Okay. Um, so you know, I've I've uh, come to you because I really want to um, share something that's been very um, strong in my heart. Um, you know, uh, I've I'm, I've been married for uh, twenty years, and I have a family. And something that I just cannot enjoy doing is getting to the kitchen. on a regular basis and these last two years i just find myself i have been in the kitchen and endlessly and um, i'm just not liking it i just don't know what to do about it response then it looks like you don't so you are uh, don't uh, seem to like kitchen work much uh, uh, pasta yeah i i don't you know it it starts in the morning i start like 5:30 and i end by 10 pm i mean do you work like that in the kitchen i'm sure these times maybe uh, there are people who are now working in the kitchen may, may not be for this long um and uh, just to understand a little more uh, how, how many how big is your family how, how many people do you need to uh, Do you, do you need to um, cook for so i have my uh, i have my in-laws the two of them they're two elderly people i have my husband i have my kids and then evenings i have uh, my nieces coming over so there are these many people and there are so many mouths to feed how long has this been going on for the last two years ever since the lockdown Mm. but how were you managing in the last 20 years you said that uh, last 20 years you are in the marriage and uh, uh, how were you managing on those uh, in past 20 years so so at that point of time you know they just uh, everyone goes to school or goes to work and um, you know i have some space but now everybody is want something to eat at all the time they're always hungry and uh, i i feel like a maid What really pains you about you know you being in the kitchen? What's the most thing that really pains you about being in the kitchen? Just that I don't. I mean, one, the people see me for. Uh, I mean, I'm. I feel like I'm. I'm like a maid who doesn't, and no one sees that I have anything else to do but just stick in the kitchen. I mean, I have my own likes. I have my own things I want to do. I want to pursue so many things. I want to read. I want to. talk to my friends i want to go for a jog i can't do any of this okay you want to do something else apart from cooking you want to enhance your interest i think 
seems like i don't know i'm not sure about if i want to yeah i want to do many other things but i don't like the way that i feel i just don't like the way that i feel so you feel on a ah. dead and uh, you feel um left out your dream of what your dream i think say uh, say sorry i can't hear you say once more yeah say okay hey you feel on appreciated and left out of your dreams correct absolutely i just feel nobody cares that i'm slogging in the kitchen day in and day out nobody even gives me a helping hand they don't even think that you know i would have other things to do or i have my own space i just feel that they nobody cares is there anybody you shared this um, experience with they say i'm overreacting so when you shared when you shared your experience yeah they say i'm just overreacting that it isn't a big thing and you know that i'm i am the woman of the house and that's what i'm expected to do so i i can't i don't think they understand even and you've not thought of you know meeting someone higher than the people you're sharing with Sorry I didn't follow that Harrison once again. Uh, I'm saying that you know you have not thought of maybe visiting someone that is um of authority over the marriage or something. Oh is this a marriage show? I thought it was What about asking for help? Have you thought of asking for help from others? I did. Help in the I did they they all they all say they have their own work they have their own calls and it's not a big thing that i should learn to manage i think uh, you should need a helping hand i mean someone could share the work and someone could you know we can share your thoughts with it so i think uh, uh, you should hire a maid as well as it a uh, work should be reduced then talk to your husband and uh, try to explain him that you know after like so long working and it might be a monotonous work for you and i think uh, being a soulmate being a husband a partner he will definitely going to understand and you both need to you know, sit together and explain the problem properly and then come up with a solution and because uh, i think uh, a helping hand will help you to come out of this and you might have a definite time for yourself you have you should have a space for yourself so uh, i think um, you should have you know call your husband and talk to about it okay all right thank you counselors spending <laughs> <laughs> and acknowledging you i think thank you bhatia <laughs> okay so so i think uh, just a couple quick observations and then we'll we'll close i think um okay good job i mean y'all did you'll try to feel i think one thing is i was so so glad that there was so many overwhelming responses so that's wonderful okay uh one of the things that personally i i felt that wasn't picked up was that i wasn't given enough of space to really share my brokenness and i think one of the questions that harrison brought up helped he said what in this cooking or what in in your time in the kitchen does for you what what does it do for you what does it make you he didn't say make you feel he used another word but i can't pick that up uh, but uh, that's what he said and that's where i said you know i feel i feel uh, disrespected or i feel nobody cares so that's something i put to you okay and that's something that you catch on to things okay um, can you flesh that out a little bit for me you said nobody cares for you could you express that a little bit more so to really help me come to a place of figuring out that i am feeling really really terrible about this okay what most of you all were doing was asking questions you know how many days do you cook how many people are there now these are yes relevant but but maybe not in such quick succession okay so like like when i said there are 10 people to cook oh me oh, that that must be a whole 
um, that's that's a big number. It looks like a big number. And I think uh, that then again, Harrison said, how do you manage that? You know, so then, uh, you know, so what you're doing is not just picking up information, but taking that information and drawing a little bit about what I'm experiencing or what I'm thinking there. OK, so good job. OK, and I think the last thing that Prabhaka said is um, that that becomes advice, that becomes solution giving rather you need to bring it out in another way and say, and this is what we're going to be learning about questioning and saying, okay, this is how you've looked at it. What do you think in your mind you should do to find a way to work this out? Now you're going to put that question to me, okay? Rather than bringing out the answer from you, okay? So I'll say, um, I don't know, I've tried very many things, uh, so then, then maybe one says, "Could you tell me what are the things you've tried?" So I'll say, "Okay, you know, I, I've uh, I've uh, spoken to my kids about it. I've spoken to my neighbor about it. So two things." I said, "Okay, uh, is there anyone else you could talk to who has an influence in your family?" So I said, "Oh, my husband. Uh, have you have you thought about that? What are your feelings with regard to talking about talking to your husband? And I may say, oh, what are he's so busy or he's so that he's so something. So do you see that you're trying to get the the counselee to generate a solution and not give on a solution? So you should be able to lead in such a way that they are able to come up with a solution. Okay, rather than saying, uh, you know, I think you should talk to your husband. You need the time. You should get a maid. All this is right. I mean. It, it could be right, but I don't know if that fits for me. So the question I would ask is, you know, you seem so overwhelmed. Uh, what are some of the ways you think you can work this out? They, they'll say, no, I've tried everything. Tell me what you've tried. And then after, after going on, asking them, okay, let's look at, let's brainstorm together. Okay, these are two things you've tried. Is there anyone else that you could talk to? Or is there anyone else's help you can bring in? And that's, you know, that's how you help the person generate a solution on their own. Okay. All right, great. Thank you all so much. I mean, I, I completely thoroughly enjoyed myself. I hope this was a good learning experience. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for, uh, for times like this, even through these mediums that we can learn and grow and make mistakes and understand. Father, we pray that uh, you will teach us these skills holy spirit even though sometimes it seems, seems very daunting we pray that uh, you will um, work in us and you will help us you will prompt us to say the right things to respond in a way to others that makes them feel comfortable that makes them feel that they can share and open up and through the power of your holy spirit teach us lord to be um, uh, to empower them to come up with ideas and solutions. Thank you for this ministry. It's so beautiful that you're teaching us through these ways. We ask, Lord, that all of this will be used for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. I'll meet you all, all next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. God bless you. Bye.